Israel's Genesis lunar lander has been successfully launched on the first leg of its journey to the surface of the moon. The spacecraft was flown into orbit aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which blasted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. If successful, Israel will become only the fourth nation on Earth after the Soviet Union, the United States and China to undertake the 384,000 kilometre journey to land on the lunar surface. It's a big moment. Uh, We are really excited. We're sure that you are also. So one thing we always do in every event is uh, we take a selfie. Three, two, 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 one, one, to the moon! What we have done is we've used our ingenuity and we will achieve the objective and we will show the world what we in Israel could do. This lander will be the world's first privately funded spacecraft to reach the moon. Its mission is to transmit photos and video of its new home and conduct tests of the environment. An interesting fact about this lander is that it will be using its own power to travel to the moon, which will take nearly two months. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Do a first pitch and down range. Right, stage over pulse is normal. So at T plus 47 seconds into flight, everything is looking nominal. We're currently preparing to throttle down as we enter max Q. Vehicle supersonic. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. So there you just heard we pass through max Q. We will now throttle back up. MVAC engine chill. There you heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. This is the point in which we start to flow the super cold liquid oxygen into the turbo pumps, bringing them down to flight temperatures. This helps us reduce the temperature difference between the liquid oxygen and the hardware. Everything looking good with stage one trajectory. Main engine cutoff, Miko 1, approaching now. Miko. Second stage engine has lit the gorgeous red orange glow of that nozzle. We're now at T plus three minutes and five seconds into flight. Coming up next will be fairing deployment. Now that second stage is in the vacuum of space, uh, we don't need the fairing anymore. So in order to improve our vehicle efficiency, we shed the extra weight. Fairing separation confirmed. Stage one entry startup. And their entry burn has begun. This should last about 18 seconds. Stage one entry burn. Shut down. And entry burn is complete for first stage. Next, coming up at about T plus eight minutes will be a rapid series of events. This will include the first second stage engine cutoff, or SECO-1, the start of the landing burn, followed by the first stage landing. SECO-1 and the landing burn will occur within four seconds of each other, followed by the stage one landing shortly after that. Stage one landing startup. We have SECO-1. Stage one landing will be Uh, it sounds like we do have a successful first stage landing, despite the challenging conditions there. And we also got confirmation of stage two in good orbit. And right about now, the engine will cut off. And when the time comes that Israel has landed on the moon, and the time comes that the world begins to use the moon as a launching pad for exploration in space, they will remember the contribution that we have made. This is our contribution to mankind. We are coming up on our first deployment of the night, the Space IL Lunar Lander. Space IL spacecraft separation confirmed. And we've got confirmation of separation. Separation confirmed. A successful deployment of the Space IL Lunar Lander, a first non governmental lander to make its way to the moon. The 585 kilogram Genesis lander, Be'ashit in Hebrew, was successfully deployed into orbit 35 minutes after launch, igniting its own onboard rocket engine for the first of several times designed to progressively increase its orbital apogee or furthest distance from the Earth until its orbit's so large it encompasses the Moon as well. 
using orbital raising instead of direct lunar transfer manoeuvre has become the preferred way of reaching the moon for robotic missions because it uses less fuel. But it takes about seven weeks rather than just three days with a direct lunar transfer. Once its orbit includes that of the Moon, the spacecraft undertakes a lunar orbit insertion, going into orbit around the Moon for between two and four weeks before eventually landing on the Mare Serenitatis, or Sea of Serenity, a dark, massive 674-kilometre-wide basaltic lunar basin located just east of the Mare Ibrium and between the landing sites of the Apollo 15 and 17 missions. Once on the lunar surface, Genesis will send back images and use its magnetometer to study the lunar magnetic field in order to help scientists better understand how it formed. It will also deploy a laser retroreflector array to the lunar surface for NASA as part of a new lunar-based navigational system for spacecraft visiting the Moon. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter should also be in position to document the spacecraft's descent and landing. And NASA's Deep Space Communications Network will provide telemetry and communications for mission managers in Tel Aviv. As well as its scientific payload, Genesis is also carrying a digital time capsule known as the Arc Lunar Library, which contains over 30 million pages of data and millions of documents from around the world, including dictionaries in multiple languages, as well as encyclopedias, and a full copy of the English-language Wikipedia, a copy of the Judeo-Christian Bible, examples of fine literature and art, as well as children's drawings, the diaries of a Holocaust survivor, Israel's national anthem, the Hatikva, an Israeli flag, and a copy of the Israeli Declaration of Independence. Built by Israeli Aerospace Industries and Space IL, Genesis was originally designed to compete for the Google Lunar X Prize to become the first privately built spacecraft to travel to and land on the lunar surface. While the Lunar X Prize was eventually called off when no one met the time limits, Space IL decided to continue with the project. Space AL was founded as a non-profit organization designed to promote scientific and technological education. As Genesis rockets towards the moon, India is now planning to become the fifth lunar nation. It'll launch its Chandrayaan-2 mission to place a lander and rover on the moon's surface later this year, and Japan is planning its own mission for either next year or 2021. Meanwhile, NASA is also looking at returning the United States to the lunar surface later this year, and detailed planning is continuing on the Gateway Lunar Space Station project, which could be operational by 2026. As well as the Genesis spacecraft, the SpaceX mission also carried two other payloads, including the US Air Force Research Laboratory S-5 spacecraft and Indonesia's first high-throughput telecommunications satellite, the PSN-6 Nusantara Satu. Both were successfully deployed 45 minutes after launch before separating into their separate orbits. The 60 kg Space Situational Awareness S-5 spacecraft is an experimental U.S. Air Force micro-satellite designed to detect and locate near geosynchronous orbital space objects for routine and frequent updates of the geocatalog. Meanwhile, Indonesia's 4,100 kg Space Systems Laurel built PSN-6 is equipped with 26 high-throughput and 12 extended C-band transponders, as well as 18 high-throughput KU-band transponders, all designed to improve telecommunications and internet services across the Indonesian archipelago. This mission was the third flight for the same Falcon 9 booster, which had already flown the Iridium 7 mission last July and Argentina's SEOCOM 1A Earth Observation Satellite mission 11 weeks later. The booster returned to Earth following Mika or main engine cutoff and first aid separation, successfully landing on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, which had been pre-positioned in the North Atlantic Ocean downrange of the launch site. 